everybody. Hey, hey Sherman. Thank you for coming on our, as our guest for episode two of our Inside Insights podcast. It's great to have you. Thank so, you. It's great to have you in Singapore. So how has it been for you? you I think this is your second time this year, right? Second time this year. Yeah, yes. it's been uh, really good. Yeah. A lot of uh, good customer meeting so far. Great. Uh, challenging, interesting, but I think the opportunity is there. It's good. Wow, that's great. I was, I was, I have been wanting to catch up with you for a while because mm. I really want to understand from you. How did you get into sales and, and why? Greed. I'm Greed. a very greedy person. No. Okay. <laughs> Basically, I got into sales. I actually started life as a programmer. Huh? Oh, really? With, okay. Yeah, within the healthcare industry. Yes. And because of my background in both computer science as well as uh, accounting, yeah. I was actually, I got involved in uh, programming uh, accounting systems, general ledgers, account payables, and so on, right? And over time, with this healthcare application system company, uh, we sold these systems around the world, and I was sent to implement uh, a lot of these systems okay. uh, because I was involved in designing it, right? Right. And then over time, they asked me to, why don't you present some of these uh, systems and demonstrate some of these to prospective clients when I travel? So I did that, and then over time, my boss said, well, you seem to have a knack of, uh, in presenting and demonstrating and so on, so, and the ability to build relationships with customers. I said, why don't you try a hand at sales? You should, right? Wow. Because it'll help you make more money. So I said, okay, <laughs> let's do it. And the rest is history. Wow, that's amazing. It's like, it's like a natural progression for you, I guess. I think so. Yeah, it, was, yeah. uh, it was lucky. Was yeah, lucky. so with your experience, I'm also curious, what are the qualities that make a successful or even just a good salesperson? Well, I think obviously you want salespeople who are uh, hungry enough to go out there to knock on doors and so on and have okay. thick skin to you know take rejection and so on right <laughs> okay but ultimately you want salespeople who are trustworthy trustworthy okay yes. I think that's very important um, the salesperson needs to be very uh, people oriented and relationship driven and so yep. on so that they can build those relationships with the customer mm -hmm. um, other qualities would be an ability to listen to the customer mm -hmm. right understand the needs and you know translate that into what the company uh, has to offer yeah. for them to to meet those needs i think that's the other important thing mm. and i think the final thing is you know one of the things that's important is the discipline to really continue to follow up okay right and and uh, i think that's uh, those are important qualities yeah. do you see these being big factors of the success we have here in Asia especially um i understand you took on this role last year right Formerly as a... Within, within yeah. Lumen, yes. Yes, within right. Lumen, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And moving on to really about the customer side of things, right? Mm -hmm. I, I am also curious, you know, today is customer experience and people are worried that or oh, customer leave after buying one thing. So I, I think even in the consumer space, people are very concerned about this. You know, let alone B2B business, it's even harder to, you know, retain customers. So I'm curious, what is your approach to building and maintaining a good relationship with uh, customers? Well, you know, in our space, as you say, we're not selling to consumers, right? We're selling very complex, uh, sometimes mission critical solutions. So we've invested all this time in building the relationships and the trust with the customers. Mm -hmm. Let's not lose that. So in other words, I think maintaining contact with the customers on a regular basis, even though you've got nothing to sell to them at this point in time, I think it's important, right? Customers need to, to trust that you're there for them. I think that's uh, one element of it. Therefore, continue to be in touch with the contacts that you've made with those customers. Beyond that, right, is to make sure that from a new perspective today, we have invested in a customer success organization mm -hmm. that's really meant to uh, work hand in hand with our salespeople right. and provide additional uh, touch points and contacts for the customers mm -hmm. and these customer success individuals are the whole purpose is really to make sure that the customers mm -hmm. can succeed with Lumen yes right yeah okay. so they're not out there to sell them new mm -hmm. services or sell them new things and okay. so on. in fact it's to one of the key things that they need to do is conduct uh, regular service reviews with our key customers viewing how the service is going with actual data points right mm -hmm. Uh, as reviewing the SLAs, the performance, and so on, and coming up with um, you know service improvement uh, recommendations yep. or service improvement mm -hmm. plans and yeah. so on. So, in that environment, the customer will feel well. Not only have you just 
<laughs> you've just not sold me something. You're now, you know, making sure that I know how to use it and it's successful. And if it's not, that we can fine tune it as we go along. Yeah. Um, now, as we do that as well, I think we also get to hear about the customer's business in a non-sales environment. And, and therefore, you get to know a lot more about the customer's mm -hmm. uh, needs, at real needs, and you can help again uh, cultivate or develop solutions yeah. that can serve those needs. Mm -hmm. right. I, I really agree with the point around like, if our customer is successful, we are successful. It's a mm -hmm. good indicator of how we are performing and uh, helping our customers. Yeah. Really. And talking about customers, you, you also mentioned about understanding their challenges, understanding their problems. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that um, a lot of uh, service providers like us have become aware of. Instead of just selling a product, like you said, selling a product and just forget about it. But we are trying to teach them, trying to help them to grow their business with the products that they buy from us and providing that service. So talking about problems, right? You have, I, I bet you have spoke to a lot of customers across Asia Pacific. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to understand what are some of the top concerns that you have heard from customers these days and how are you working to address them? Well, there are really two main concerns that yeah. I hear regularly yeah. as I meet with customers. One is, um, you know, this, this thing around cloud transformation and, you know, um, being cloud ready, for example. Okay. And cloud uh, is not just about the uh, public cloud that's out there. It's also about private clouds. It's about hybrid clouds and so on. So that's one area. How do they, uh, how do they actually manage their cloud workloads? Mm -hmm. The second one is around cybersecurity. Very topical. You yeah, open a newspaper every yeah, day. Yeah, every or, day there's you know, something. It, it, <laughs> everywhere. Some new attack and so on. So yes. customers are always uh, concerned about that. So when yep. you talk to customers about these two things, um, you know, they're all ears. Mm -hmm. They're always uh, up open to listen to you. Um, so from our perspective, from Lumen's perspective, we're, by the way, we're not uh, just a service provider. Yeah. Uh, we are a technology company. Yes. Right? So we've got a, a range of solutions that covers the, the technology stack. Mm. So from that perspective, to when, when we look at these two concerns around cybersecurity and the cloud, um, the message for our clients is, you know, very straightforward. Okay. We are here to help you transform okay. your IT business infrastructure and environment mm, mm. to one that is uh, appropriate for today's cloud-centric world. And by the way, as I say, cloud mm. doesn't mean just public cloud, just public it's public cloud. and yes, private. Yes, so it will help you transform your IT environment to be cloud-ready. Yes. And as we do that, we help you simplify that uh, management of that, and mm, mm. the the, uh, the consolidate your your infrastructure from that perspective as well. Yep. And as we do all of that, it's a great opportunity for us to help them secure that environment as well. Yes. Right. So have security mm. kind of built in right mm. from the ground up, not bolted on. Mm. So that's uh, some things that we do. Yes, yes. That that sounds like a great message and. Um, does it, does it work with customers? Have you spoke with any customers from this perspective? Can you maybe provide one example? Okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, in fact, it was quite interesting. I was in a conversation with uh, a CTO of a very large Asian headquartered hospitality group. Oh, okay. Right? Um, and, you know, we were talking there about cybersecurity and so on. Mm. And uh, he was happy with the services that we had. Right? But he mm. said, look, you know, his view is that, and they had more projects that they want to bring online. And he said that, look, you know, I just simply do not have enough people on the ground to, to do all this myself, number one. Okay. Number two, I also do not believe in having too many uh, uh, vendors, right? Oh, okay. uh, too many providers out there. Mm -hmm. Because why? When you have too many providers out there, I, they, they have to educate them on their culture, their way of doing things, their systems and so on. And when things go wrong, by the way, there's all this, this finger so pointing. Yes, who is at fault, right? Yeah, yeah. So they want to uh, narrow it down. Okay. And so it was, uh, it, it, it merged very well. It came in at the right time. Mm -hmm. So I talked about our approach in terms of pro being a, a technology provider across mm -hmm. the stack, how we have our pedigree, not just in networks, uh, but also in cloud management, cloud workload management, as well in cybersecurity. And we, you know, it's it's one mm. uh, provider do it. Yeah. This is perfect. You know, let's mm, have okay. that conversation. So, yeah. 
one thing has led to another, and uh, you know, hopefully we will continue to, to expand with, with them. Wow, and that's also yeah. how you continue to build and maintain that good relationship with customers also. That's correct. I continue to be mm. of value to the customer. Basically. Yes, be of value. I think that's the and most relevant. important thing. Yeah, yes, be, be relevant, relevant to them yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing something that, talking about something that they are familiar with, but it's at the top of their mind. Yeah, things like cybersecurity and getting into the other tracks of conversation, which is really harmonizing all these different aspects of technology. I think that's the beauty of technology today. I think so. Yes. Very exciting world. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Benny, for your time. And My pleasure. My privilege. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yes.